When I first set up this saltwater tank, it was supposed to be a display frag tank that was nice to look at, as well as functional, very much like myself. But I got it wrong and it ended up looking rubbish, which also meant I neglected it. But now I have fixed all that, so today I'm going to show you the simple changes I made to transform this tank into an awesome LPS display tank. Now although this tank looked a bit of a mess, there were only really two things holding it back, a bad aquascape and dull coral choices. Now my aquascape was previously made up of live rock, but because live rock is difficult to make into the sloping angles you need for the most visually appealing aquascape, I bought a custom scape from RR Aquascapes here in the UK. It has great sloping angles, holes in every branch for easy coral placement, and lots of caves and hiding places for my fish. Once that arrived, I then pulled out all of the corals and all of the old rock and moved as much of the rock as I could into the sump to retain the beneficial bacteria. Then I simply dropped the new scape straight in. And because I retained much of the old rock and because this tank is nicely established, I've seen no ill effects in my corals as a result of swapping out the aquascape. Although my phosphate did spike from 0.27 to 0.8 a week after I added the scape. So I've needed to keep an eye on testing and regularly refresh my phosphate removing media. And this scape was instantly the biggest improvement I made to this tank. And you can already tell that this will look like a really beautiful natural reef when it's covered in coral. It has 41 frag plug holes, which gives me plenty of real estate to add lots of coral, but the branches are also spaced far enough apart to mean that overcrowding won't be an issue for at least a couple of years. And another thing that makes this such a great scape is that the coral holes are all on different levels, so when it's grown out the entire thing will be completely covered in coral and you'll hardly be able to see any rock whatsoever. And while it is blindingly white here on day one, it didn't take long to colour up with a nice natural layer of biofilm. With the new scape in, I then sifted through the existing corals I had to find and remove those I didn't like. And I was ruthless in selling on anything that I thought was less than spectacular, which meant I moved on well over half of the corals I had before. And because I'd been planning this for a while, I also had a bunch of LPS corals in my main tank that I could easily transfer over to this tank. And my criteria for coral selection was simple, bright contrasting colours and lots of wavy movement. I've chosen mostly gonies because they have some of the brightest colours I've seen, and when you look in the right places, you'll be surprised at the sheer variety of colours, shapes and sizes you can get. And I've also gone for a handful of chalice corals on the other side of the scape. They don't have the movement of gonies of course, but they do offer a nice contrasting growth pattern, and the colours are just as insane. And in fact, the chalices I've chosen are all multicoloured, so they look fantastic just on on their own, let alone next to other corals of complementary colours. At the moment the top shelf has a few hardy SPS corals, plus a few zoas that I'll be moving on, but I think in time I'll thin out the SPS corals, so I just end up with two or three in total. And that's because the SPS corals I've gone for will grow like crazy, so there won't be space for too many. And a bright red branching SPS colony next to a bright green branching SPS colony will look absolutely fantastic. And of course, no reef tank would be complete without a few awesome fish. So I added a fox face to my existing Tommany tank to keep any algae in check, and I bought a pair of Bangai Cardinals, who will do nothing to keep algae at bay, but whose unique silver and black markings look cool, and that's good enough for me. And finally, I bought a pair of blue striped pipefish. Now, pipefish have been known to eat pests like flatworms, but these guys are so small that I'm not sure they'll do much good if I have an outbreak. And actually, pipefish are notoriously finicky fish to keep. So I was delighted when my pair of cleaner shrimps spawned this week, releasing lots of yummy shrimp babies into the water column. Now while the pipefish are currently eating the frozen food I put in daily, a proper meal like this was absolutely perfect for their tiny mouths. And I've never seen cleaner shrimp spawn before, so this was a really cool spectacle to watch. So that's livestock, now let's take a look at what makes this tank tick. I just dosed Kalkwasser to replenish calcium and alkalinity because it's cheap, simple and of course gives a nice little pH boost. And the pH of this tank sits between 8.2 and 8.3 all day every day, which is as close to perfect as I've ever had on any tank and should mean my corals stay nice and healthy and grow nice and fast. Apart from Kalkwasser, the only other thing I dose is manganese, which is beneficial to LPS corals and in particular Goniopora corals. And in fact, I've never been able to keep gonies in the past, but since I've started dosing one milliliter of manganese per day, they have absolutely thrived. 
For filtration, I have a comically oversized filter roller to polish the water, a skimmer that's too large for this tank to control nitrates, and a perfectly sized GFO reactor to control phosphate. My nitrate sits at around 25 parts per million, and my phosphate was at around 0.25 parts per million before the spike, and long term I'll be aiming for a nitrate of around 10 parts per million and phosphate of around 0.1 parts per million, although if they drift a little outside that, I'm not really too bothered, in part because LPS corals are filthy animals and like a bit of dirty water. Now as part of this refresh, I didn't spend any money upgrading equipment, and instead I put all of my budget into livestock. And I have to say, it was 10 times more rewarding buying awesome fish and corals than it would have been buying new lights and skimmers. And this will be a long-term project, so if you want to see how it develops, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, happy reefing. Thank you.